how can you study in the US for free? That's the important question that we are answering in this video. So don't go anywhere. Now there are three questions in that one question. Let's try and take them one by one and try and address them. So the first question is, is it even possible to study in US colleges and universities for free? And the simple answer is absolutely yes. I'm a perfect example of it. I came to the US and studied my entire education in US for free. There are tens of thousands of students who are doing it now. They're studying in US for free and you can do it too. So now the second question is, if you can study in the US for free, is there a formula? Is there a process that's going to improve your chances for actually coming and studying in the US for free? And yes, there is. There's a formula. There's a formula that can be used not only by international students, but by local US students that can actually improve their chances for getting admission and financial aid. Now, then the third question is, if there is such a formula, if there is such a process, what is it? Where is it? How can you use it? How can you implement it? Well, that's the question that we are discussing in detail in this video. So continue watching and we will actually get you through the entire process and you'll be better prepared to actually apply for US colleges and universities and have a much better chance of not only getting admission, but also getting financial aid. So let's start. Hello, my name is Nitin Pradhan and I'm the co-founder of Scale Up USA. And if you need more information about me, you can actually go to LinkedIn. There's a whole bunch of information about me. If you need additional information, you can go to Wikipedia. There's a whole lot of background about me. But let me get back to the topic at hand. And the topic at hand is how do you come and study in the U.S., whether you're a U.S. citizen or whether you're an international student, how do you come here and study in U.S. colleges and universities for free? Is it even possible? So let's discuss that issue. Now, I want to get into a little bit of background about this topic. Why did we even create such a program? We created such a program. We created such a resource because we knew there was a big problem. There is a lot of information available around admissions and colleges and universities and scholarships and all those kind of things on the Internet. But the problem is this information is very scattered. It's not accurate. It's not complete. It's not easy to find. And it's very confusing. Parents and students tell us that when they go out and access this information, they spend a ton of time trying to find the right information. And they spend even more time trying to build together a complete strategy to apply. And when they try to apply, there's contradictory information there. And when they go out and execute that whole information and strategy, it doesn't work out. It turns out to be extremely costly because what happens is you not only miss out on admission and financial aid, but potentially it can even impact the whole career of the student. Now here's the issue. If you are a student of a rich parent, a very rich parent, that rich parent is going to put tens of thousands of dollars and get you a private counselor who's going to guide you through all these things and you're just going to be fine. But if you're not the very rich, then how do you manage this? Then you don't have a resource. And that is why we created this resource. This resource is available digitally online. You can access it in US and around the world. And it's very, very affordable. That is why we created this resource. This resource has some free resources in it. It has some paid resources in it. And we are going to actually talk about all of these things in this whole discussion. So let's get started. The first thing I want to mention is the way you access this resource is you go to scaleupusa.xyz on your browser. Once you go there, you'll come to this site. It's called Digital Growth Accelerator. We are based out of Washington, D.C. in U.S. And once you go to this site, you should go to the top menu and click on Career Trajectory. So click on Career Trajectory. This is the resource that I've been talking about. This is the resource which helps high schoolers, 9th to 12th grade, and college students to prepare for colleges, succeed in colleges, and build a winning career. So this is the resource you need to get to. And to get to the free section of this resource, all you need to do is to click on Start for Free. Now, once you click onto this free resource, you'll come to this form, and all you need to do is fill this form. You do not require a credit card. And once you register, you should be able to access all the free resources of the system. Now, of course, if you need to do the paid resources, you may need to put in the credit card, but you can do that later. So let's get started. At the beginning of this video, I had mentioned that we are going to help you create 
your formula for your success in U.S. colleges and universities. I think we're going to go a step further. What we are going to do is actually help you build a custom formula for your success. Now, here's the issue. You're many, many students. You have different views. You have different likings. You have different opinions. So one formula doesn't fit everyone. And that is why what we're going to do is going to give you a template that you can use so that you can actually build your own custom formula so that you can succeed. Our job is not to sort of influence you and push you in one direction. Our job is to provide you the best advice in the most transparent manner at the most affordable rates so that you can actually become successful. Now, here's the first advice that I will give you. If you're going to study in U.S. colleges and universities, if you're going to do a bachelor's degree, you're probably going to spend four to six years doing this. It's going to cost you anywhere between $80,000 to $180,000 typically to go out and do a bachelor's degree in U.S. Now, here's the point to note. This is the second largest investment most students will make in their entire life. The number one investment you normally will make is your own house. So this is the second largest investment. But here's the issue. It's not only the second largest investment, it is the investment that's going to decide your entire life. If you make this decision wisely, you're going to be successful throughout your career. And if you make this decision badly, you're probably going to have a terrific or terrible time in your entire life. So this is a crucial decision. That is why you need all this help. That is why this program actually exists. So let's now get into the actual program itself and let's talk about how you can do this step by step. We are now going to start with the actual building of your custom formula for success, just as we discussed at the beginning of this video. So let's get started. So I hope by now you have actually registered for career trajectory, at least the free section, and you can actually go in and get into the system and start working on it. So we are going to go step by step and we are going to go through the template. We are going to discuss the template and you should actually go internally in the system and actually take that program so that you can start building your custom formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to get into the system. I'm just going to scroll down. I'm going to show you the whole template. I'm going to discuss the various components of this formula and then you can actually go out and apply them. So once you get to career trajectory, you just scroll down. And once you scroll down, you're going to see this section called career trajectory program index. And this is the formula. This is the template that's available. It's complete. It's very, very detailed. I'm going to go through it step by step and discuss each section and the relevance for admission and fellowship and your success. So you can understand the relevance. You should then actually go to the section, understand it, learn from it, and apply it towards your custom formula. So let's start off with section number one. The section number one is career trajectory counseling. This is a foundational section. This section is coming free as part of your registration. It's a very important section. So make sure that you pay special attention to it because the rest of the sections are actually built on this particular section. Now, here's what this section deals with. If you want to be successful in life, you have to be mentally fit. You want to mentally want to be successful. And this particular section deals with that particular activity. Remember, success is not accidental. Success is intentional. And how do you actually have the intent to succeed? How do you create that entire program in your mind? How do you program your mind for success is what is being discussed in this particular section. So go out and take this entire section. This section is roughly 90 minutes long. People who take it love it. And I hope you are going to love it too. And once you complete this section, then you can join the premium section. At that stage, you will require a credit card. But again, this is a very affordable program. The cost for this program is less than $1 a day. We are now onto section number two. The section number two deals with international students and parents. These are international students who are interested in study abroad, study in USA for colleges and universities. This is a specific section for them. This section talks about 
in detail about current international students in US and what they are doing. What objectives did they have? What measures have they taken? What kind of colleges are they studying? How are they funding themselves? All this kind of information is available here. You need to understand UN, US is the number one destination for foreign students. There are more than a million international students studying in the US. There are more international students studying in the US than Australia, Canada, New Zealand and UK combined. Now one word of caution, there's this whole breed of education consultants which is popping up in many international countries. They do not have good knowledge about the US education system, the colleges and universities, yet they are actually advising international students and their parents. Many times this advice is completely wrong and as a result, international students and their parents are paying dearly in terms of tuition paid, admissions got and loans taken and the high interest rates. So be very careful, put your personal effort in it and actually lead your own way in trying to research for universities and colleges in US. We are now on section number three and this is a very foundational analysis step that you need to take to actually build your custom formula. And in this section, we are going to ask you three strategic questions. You need to actually look at these strategic questions and answer them honestly because based on your answers, you will start building a foundation for your application process. So go back, listen to these questions, think about them, potentially talk with your friends and family and then answer them so that you will have the foundational knowledge, the analysis, the background to go out and put your custom formula ahead. We are now on section number four. Section number four deals with college application timeline strategy. This is a core part of building your custom formula. So let me explain why. Here's the situation that happens. Typically, our career trajectory program is addressing two types of students. Either they're high schoolers, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, trying to get into college, or we have college students who are in the bachelor's program, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, trying to get into master's or PhD. These are the two types of people who are typically going in for our you know, career trajectory program. Now, both of them make one common mistake many, many times. They start planning for their next level of you know, college career right into their final year. So a high schooler may start planning their college application when they are in the final year. Same goes true with the person who is doing bachelor's degree. They may start planning their master's or PhD when they are in their final year. This is an absolute no-no because the final year creates all kinds of problems. You're already stressed out. You don't have any time. You're giving your standardization test. You're risking everything if you actually fail in any of the components of college application because you just don't have the time to recover from it. That is why we have completely redesigned the college application timeline strategy. What we suggest is you actually go through this entire section because what we have done is we have taken all the components of college application and broken them up by year by year. So you actually don't get stressed out trying to do everything in the final year. You do some things in the freshman year, other things in the sophomore year, still other things in the junior year, and then finally you do some things in the senior year. They're very well laid out. And this way, you're reducing risk, you're reducing stress, you're actually allowing you more time, and this is going to allow you to be much more successful. This is a strategy you must follow Go back and look at it. Go back and look at what you can do there and then plan your strategy and customize it for your own needs. We are now onto section number five. Section number five is about selecting optimum college major. This is a very critical activity and most students don't pay any attention to this activity. Here's the issue. There are thousands of college majors available in U.S. colleges and universities. And most students pay little attention to which college major they are selecting when they actually should. Because the college major can decide lots and lots of things. 
It can decide whether you'll get admission or not. It can decide whether you'll get financial aid or not. It can decide whether you'll get a job or not. Ultimately, it can decide whether your career is going to be successful or not. But ask a student how they have selected their college major and they'll look at you confused. So this is something which you absolutely need to pay attention to you. Please remember, not all college majors are equally funded in colleges. Some college majors may have much more funding for financial aid, others may not. So depending on what college major you take, you might have more chances of getting admission, more chances of getting financial aid, and ultimately you may have more job opportunities. Here's something more. Some college majors will allow you to get a much higher salary than others, even though some of those college majors may be very closely related. So what I want you to do is to actually pay special attention to this particular section. Go back and look at this section. Understand the issues about college major. Look at the resources and make sure that you're selecting a college major which is optimum. What is an optimum college major? An optimum college major will allow you to get admission. It will potentially allow you to get financial aid. It will definitely allow you to get a job. It will allow you to create a magnificent career and allow you to be successful in life. We are now on to section number six. And the section number six talks about building a strong personal brand. So let me talk a little bit about some background about personal branding. Just so that you understand, there are roughly about 20 million students studying in the U.S. colleges and universities. Of these 20 million students, about a million students are from international countries. Now, here's you need to understand. There are roughly about a million students in U.S. who are getting some kind of a financial aid in terms of scholarships, assistantships, fellowships, or other kinds of aid. Now, here's the issue. Somehow, for some reason, some students are getting this financial aid, while others are not. And what is that reason? That reason is because these students have actually been able to communicate with the colleges or universities and explain to them how special they are. They may be special in sports. They may be special in engineering. They may be special in research. They may be special in some kind of activity, something which the college lies, something which the college recognizes, and therefore the college rewards these students by giving them a scholarship or fellowship, assistantship, or some kind of financial aid. So it's critical for you to actually show the college that you are special. How do you show a college that you're special. The way you do it is by having a strong personal brand. Now, how the heck do you create a strong personal brand? That is what is being discussed in this section. First, we talk about what is a personal brand. And then we talk about how you move from being just a commodity student to a special student that every college is going to want. And the way they are going to want you and get you is not only by giving you admission, but giving you financial aid. And typically you will try to get the best and the maximum possible financial aid, which could be a full fellowship. So in this section, we also give specific examples of how you can do personal branding. We have several examples. You can actually learn from these examples and create your personal brand. Now here's the important issue. Once you learn how to create a personal brand and you do create a personal brand for yourself, you can actually coast using that personal brand for life. Not only is it going to help you get admission and financial aid, it's probably going to help you get a job, get a better salary and have a much, much better career. Again, a very important part of your custom formula. Pay special attention learn from this section, and then create your own personal brand. We are now on to section seven. And the section seven talks about preparing for standardized tests. Now, standardization tests are tests which are actually testing your capacity and capability to study at a college level. 
And they could be anything from ACTs, SATs, GREs, GMATs, LSATs, MCATs. There are a whole bunch of them there. And you may need to take the right kind of test for the right kind of major at the right level that you're planning to go. So this section is actually talking about standardization tests. What are these? How are these tests taken? How do you interpret them? How do colleges evaluate these tests along with your other capabilities are some of the things that we are discussing in this particular section. We are also discussing how to develop a winning strategy to actually prepare for this test. There's a strategy that you can use so that these tests do not become very stressful. There's also a timeline that you can follow so that you can actually get this test done much earlier and so you're ready for your applications when your final year comes. Now in this section, we also talk about some test preparation resources. Some of these resources are free, some of these resources are paid. So all in all, a great section that you absolutely need to take into account as you build your custom formula. Ultimately, where you apply is going to depend on what kind of college it is, whether it requires or it does not require a standardized test, and what's the importance that particular college or university gives to standardized tests. So all of this kind of information is really relating to this particular section. So again, pay special attention and plan your strategy of where you apply, what majors you take, depending on what score you get. Again, there's a lot more about this coming into selecting the best fit colleges later, but I wanted to bring this section out and let you start preparing for standardization tests that is going to impact your career, your admission, your financial aid. We are now on to section number eight. And section number eight deals with selecting the best fit colleges to apply. This is a very important section because if you don't select the right colleges to apply, it can impact you very negatively. You may not get admission. You may not get financial aid. You might actually pay too much for tuition. You might actually not get a job or you might get a job which is not really equal to what your capability of earning salary is. And ultimately, you might actually have not so successful a career. So selecting the best fit college is a very important activity. The next thing that I will tell you here is that there are 3,000 colleges in U.S. So you have a wide, wide choice. And I've seen some absolutely crazy reasons why students select certain colleges. I've seen students select a certain college because their dad went to that college. I've seen students select certain college because the college has a great sports team. I've seen students select certain college because their cafeteria was good or because their dorm was good or because they were close to a beach or because they were a party town. Now, none of these are great examples for why you should select a particular college or university. Your reason to select a college or university is singular. What can it do for your future career? That's all that matters. And so in this section, we get into great bit of detail about how to select the best fit colleges. And we also talk about how many colleges to apply and we give a number of resources that you should look into before you select your best fit college. And what we are suggesting is once you select your best fit college, that's the time you go out and talk to your friends and family and make sure that you have made the right decision. That is what this entire program is about. So pay special attention to this because this is a part of the step that's going to significantly impact you in your future career. Make a great decision here and you are going to have a successful life. Make a bad decision here and you may be paying the rest of your life. In section number nine, we are going to deal with securing financial aid for colleges and universities in US. Now, if you remember, we started this video by asking a question, how can you get full financial aid for studying in US? And we are actually come a full circle where this particular section is talking about that very specific topic. So in this section, we are talking about the various kinds of financial aid possibilities that are available. And the formula 
for seeking financial aid. We are also going to talk about how typical families are paying for colleges in US and we're going to talk about some important aspects like what happens if you take a college loan and how much will you be paying back. So there's a lot of very important information available here. Here's what I would suggest. This section is so critical that not only you, the student, should take it, but we also encourage that your parents actually watch this section because they will have to get intimately involved with this section if you want to get admission and financial aid in the U.S. universities. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to sort of focus on in this section. We have this whole section about Y-29 college savings and prepaid plans. Now, of course, you, if you're in the earlier grades, like if you're in the ninth or 10th grade, there may be some potential for your parents to still start saving for your college education. So that's something which I want you to be aware of. I also want to talk to you about searching for scholarships and grants. Now, just so that you're aware, there are billions of dollars of worth of grants and scholarships that are available for students, both US and international that are available. Now, what's happening sadly is students are not making the effort to actually research these scholarships and grants and apply to them. And that's why billions of dollars of grants and scholarships are going waste. Now, of course, it takes some effort to actually research this scholarship, find out which are applicable for you, apply to them systematically on time, but it can be done. So this is what we would suggest. We have given a whole list of resources where you can search for some scholarships and grant in this section. The other thing which is very critical in this particular section is what we call free application for federal student aid. That's called FAFSA. Now, if you are a U.S. student and you want to get any kind of financial aid, you probably will be asked to fill in FAFSA. FAFSA is a complicated form. You should understand how to fill it. You might want to get onto it early, get all the documents that you need, make sure that your parents are aware of it. And so we talk in detail about FAFSA. We also actually demonstrate the FAFSA application online so you can actually see what it looks like and then you can go out and test it out. Again, a very, very important section, a section that not only every student should take, but their parents too, and they can then start planning their strategy, how much can they actually pay, how much money they might have to take in terms of loan, what kind of fellowship they might need. All of that discussion is going to happen in this section. We are now on to section 10. The section 10 is on creating a strong college application. Now, this is potentially the most important section in this entire formula or entire process, entire template. So pay special attention to it. One of the things you need to do is to make your application look special. And the way you're going to do it is by taking advice and guidance from this particular section. Here we are talking about a couple of different things that are very crucial for you. First, we are talking about how do you really build a superior college application. That's something which we are talking here. The next thing that we are talking here is how do colleges evaluate applicants? Because if you know how they evaluate applicants, you can actually create a proper strategy to address it. And then, of course, we are going through a host of things. I'm not going to go out and read all the things that we are doing in this section because there are many, many aspects to it. But we are talking about what are the systems that you can use to apply. We are talking about semester credits and GPAs. We also talk about what can you do if you have a low GPA? How the hell can you fix your low GPA? So there's a lot of discussion around that. We also talk about you know, GPA calculators. This is especially useful if you are an international student. You might want to understand how you take your score, your transcript, and convert it to GPAs by American standard. There are some demos there, very, very helpful. And then, of course, we are talking about some very crucial aspects. How do you create exceptional essays? 
There's a step-by-step -step formula that we have actually put out there, which is very important, which you might find to be very useful. We also talk about how you can get strong recommendation letters. Again, a step-by-step -step formula that you can use. We are also talking about college resumes, what to include, what not to include, how do you really get the right look and feel for your college resume, all of that is included. And then we also talk about college interviews. More and more colleges in US are starting to ask for college interviews. So what do you do? How do you prepare? How do you give a great college interview is also discussed here. So there are lots and lots of things in this particular section by far the most important section that's going to allow you to create that very strong college application that will not only get you admission, but financial aid. This is the place where all the discussion that we have had is coming together. So pay special attention, go back and look at this whole section and keep this information in front of you as you go out and do your college essays or recommendation letters or resumes or interviews. You may have to go back and revisit some of the discussions here because you might watch it once, but then you might need to go back again and actually look at all these sections as you go out and address specific issues like creating an essay or creating a recommendation letter. So again, very important section, pay special attention to it, use it to your advantage. And then we have section number 11. Section number 11 is talking about saving strategies for students. Now here's the issue. Studying in US is not cheap. Even if you get a full fellowship, the fellowships are not designed so that you can live extravagantly. You have to make sure that you live within the means. And sometimes students, both US and international students, are not aware of how they can save so that they can actually live within their means and actually still have a great life. And so this is the section that's dealing with that particular activity. So whether you're a US student or whether you're an international student, I would highly encourage you to actually go through this section. This section is talking about how you're going to live in the college once you're admitted, whether you have financial aid or whether you're not. So this goes through a step-by-step -step process. It talks about all kinds of areas where you can save money, raise money, actually go out and get part-time job, all kinds of deals that you can do so that you can actually either earn more money or save more money and ultimately that you do not go into large debt. So this is again a great, great section, very important. Remember, every dollar you save, you actually can use it to you know, do some other kind of activity which might be more useful than wasting your money on the wrong things. This is the section that allows you to do it, pay attention to it, go through it, and plan your strategy using this.